Okay, so now I'm returning for part two. Um, my video ended up shutting off early, so we're going to continue, okay? They're definitely trying to use the energy of fear, hoping to lower our vibrations at this point, okay? So please, if you have not seen part one, go back and watch part one if you're not, if you're unclear as to what this message is all about, um, and it'll give you a clear understanding of what this, what this reading is for, okay? I am definitely looking into what the agenda is of the powers that were and why they are using these obvious sacrifices and presenting them to the world where, you know, there's no doubt about it that it is foul play that is involved and that these are blood sacrifices for cults, uh, dark rituals, spell work, and all of these different things. So the cards that have come out so far has shown us that, you know, this is what's happening right now. There's a tower that is happening for the U.S. corporation and the powers that were, and they want you to be in the energy of fear. Why? Because they fear you and their beast is dying. And so uh, I'm going, I'm still clarifying the cards here that have already come out here. I'm going to clarify frequency because frequency came out with the card that said illness as to why they're doing this. And I discussed that the frequency, they want to lower the frequency because they realize that we are vibrating higher because we're doing the work to heal. So this says working with the enemy, the frequency working with the enemy. So they're using that as their tactic. The enemy is using that as their tactic here. Um, here we have spell broken coming out. So the spell work and the dark magic that they was using against us in our sleep state has now been broken. As I stated in the beginning of the message in part one, that when their queen died, so did their ability to use magic and things of that nature, because there was a lot of rituals that was being done right there in that, um, in that, whatever you want to call it, the castle, whatever you want to call it. Okay. Um, where she resided. And so there is the spell have, has been broken and this is why we have awakened from sleep at this point. So let me see. Um, we have multiple enemies involved. Of course, there's multiple enemies involved here. All right. Um, hidden money. And they are now receiving judgment is at the bottom of the deck. So they're, they're going through some heavy karma right now for what they have been doing behind the scenes, largely because we've taken our power back. We've been doing these rituals, declaring and decreeing that all of their tactics, their spell work, their dark magic, it now has to be canceled out and destroyed. Okay. And so because we have been putting in the work to clear these energies out, um, they are very, very afraid of where this is going and what is going to happen to them. Um, but they know the type of destruction that they have caused for a very long time. And so they recognize that what's going to happen to them, they know the pendulum has to swing back and it's going, the boomerang effect is going to be very, very hard, um, and very destructive. And so they fear that at this point. And so their way of trying to buy more time is to create the energy of fear within us so that we do not continue to rise and recognize the authority that we have and so that we will go back to sleep, but it's not going to happen. So I have this book here, The 48 Laws of Power. I'm going to be looking into this to see what are their tactics at this point. I'm just going to channel the energy and whatever page I'm guided to stop at, that is going to give me clarity about what the powers that were are currently up to. So... I'm being guided to this paragraph right here, keys to power. Um, this is on page 152. To succeed in the game of power, you have to master your emotions. But even if you succeed in gaining such self-control, you can never control the temperamental dispositions of those around you. And this presents a great danger. Most people operate in a whirlpool of emotions, constantly reacting, churning up squabbles and conflicts. Your self-control and autonomy will only bother or infuriate them. They will try to draw you into the whirlpool, begging you to, to take sides in their endless battles or to make peace for them. Okay, so this is definitely talking about emotion, self-control, which a large part of this message has been in regards to fear, which is one of the lowest vibrational energies that you can sit in, one of the lowest vibrational emotions that you can sit in. And so the tactic of the enemy for doing these outright sacrifices and not bringing justice is 
to create fear within the chosen ones so that we do not continue to rise in our power and take back our authority. And so it's saying that those people around you who are deep in their emotions, knee deep in their emotions, who are not able to practice that self-control or to create peace within themselves will look for you to either be the one to create peace or to take sides and to get into that energy with them, in other words, okay? But if you decide to remain balanced and you focus on you know, self-control, then it's saying you create enemies in that energy, which is very true. I'm sure many of you have been able to attest to just you simply becoming the best version of yourself has disrupted the spirits of a lot of those people who was in your intimate circle. And this is where you had to make the cuts where necessary. Why? And this is why severed ties came out in the first message. Okay. And so it's very clear that um, the powers that were, we, the question was, what is their tactic? Why are they doing these outright sacrifices? Well, this is clarifying it to work on the emotions and to see if you can maintain that energy of self-control in spite of the disrupted energy of those around you, uh, like the group consciousness, as well as those that are in your immediate circle. Are you able to maintain that self-control and to continue to stand in your power in spite of their efforts to uh, prevent you from doing so or to throw you off course here? So this says here, if you succumb to their emotions, um, entreaties, wait, wait a minute, if you succumb to their emotional entreaties, little by little, whatever compassion and pit, uh, pity you possess, uh, wait, hold up. If you succumb to their emotional entreaties, little by little, you will find your mind and time occupied by their problems. Do not allow whatever compassion and pity you possess to suck you in. You can never win in this game. The conflicts can only multiply. Okay, so there's going to be a lot of people around you, chosen, who are going to be very much so up in arms and emotionally off balance, operating from that space of fear. And they're going to want you to be in that energy with them. And when you decide not to, then that's when they pretty much outright become your enemy because then they say that you're careless. They say that you're delusional. They say that you're a conspiracy theorist, that you're, um, that you're crazy and all of these different things. Then on the other side of that, if you decide to pity them, little by little, they begin to drain you of your energy. And what are they going to do with that energy that they drain you of? They're going to feed it right to the beast because they're the perfect host to be under the spell of the enemy of the enemy to have that energy siphoned from them because they're operating in low vibrational in a low, vi low vibrational state. Okay. And so keep this in mind, little by little, you will find your mind and time occupied by their problems. And so if your mind and time is occupied by their problems, then you are also helping to create the narrative that the enemy wanted to create in the first place, which is a mind that that's, that's full of confusion, um, off balance, fear, you know, and creating the illusion with them is what actually gives them, you know, the ability to create because they need your energy and your thoughts and your spiritual gifts in order to do that. And so this is the agenda. Get everybody up in arms emotionally, get everybody in the energy of fear, you know, the, the world as well as those in your intimate circle, and then hopefully draw you back in. Okay get you to drown in that same energy that everybody else is drowning in. But see, this is where we have to stand in our power. We recognize what's happening. When you see what your enemy's tactic is, then you know exactly what type of ammunition to use in order to destroy it. And so it says here, on the other hand, you cannot completely stand aside for that would cause needless offense. To play the game properly, you must seem interested in other people's problems even sometimes appear to take their side. But while you make outward gestures of support, you must maintain your inner energy and sanity by keeping your emotions disengaged. So if, what they're saying is to be detached. The, the agenda, so the enemy right now is, they're gonna use the media. They're going to use these news broadcasters, the media, you know, various celebrities, various people that you know, faces that you're familiar with, and they're going to tug at your emotions, but they're going to pretend to have some pity. They're going to pretend to be emotionally engaged. They're going to pretend 
um, to, to play the side of those who are in the energy of fear and grieving. So they're going to come off as if they are also grieving. They're going to come off as if they are also um, saddened by the atrocities that are taking place and that they are, you know, um, um, you know, taken aback by what's happening. They want you to believe this, but internally they recognize that they're fully detached from it. They're numb to it because they recognize the game. Okay. They understand the game, but they also recognize that they don't want to create an offense. They don't want to come off as if they're heartless or have no emotions or um, completely desensitized to what is being shown to us. Because when they do that, that's when people begin to fight back. People begin to fight up against them even harder. And so they want to keep everybody at a level playing field. They want to keep them in the energy of fear, but they also want to keep them from getting into the space of being able to pinpoint directly and say they are the enemy. So you want to recognize the games that they're playing. I'm just going to, um, I'm going to pull, I'm going to look into one more. And then I'm going to close out because part one covered the majority of what needs to be put out there. Again, the declaration that needs to be written down and burnt is on part one, as well as what needs to be written down on the candles, uh, on the glass of a candle with a permanent marker. That declaration is also in part one. That is very important for us to do as a group. I also suggest that those of you that are chosen, take a salt bath to cleanse your energy right now because, the you know, what's happening right now, the energy is pretty thick, okay? It's a low vibrational energy that's being created through these sacrifices being uh, publicized and televised. And then also, um, in terms of like doing a fast, I feel like that's also important for the chosen to do a collective fast, especially as we move into the new year. Um, so I strongly suggest that if you choose to do like a three day fast, whether you choose to start now all the way through to the new year, maybe doing, uh, no eating, uh, any, you know, cold, I mean, warm foods until the sun goes down, something like that, only drinking smoothies and salads and fruits and things of that nature. And then eating, um, a, a little bit of a heavier meal towards the end of the day. Or if you just choose to do all juicing, drinking water, fruits and salads for the next seven days. Um, whichever one you choose to do that energy, you making the intention and setting the intention to do that is powerful in and of itself. So we're needing to raise the vibration even higher because we see that their tactic is to lower it. Okay. So let me pull one more, uh, channel one more for their, uh, the agenda and the tactics of the enemy right now. So I have here keys to power. The use of scapegoats is as old as civilization itself, and examples of it can be found in cultures around the world. The main idea behind these sacrifices is shifting guilt and sin to an outside figure, object, animal, or man, which is then banished or destroyed. The Hebrews used to take a live goat, hence the term scapegoat, upon whose head the priest would lay both hands while confessing the sins of the children of Israel. Having this had those sins transferred to it, um, having thus had those sins transferred to it, the beast would be led away and abandoned in the wilderness. So this is now talking about sacrifice, which is the question at hand. Why are they blatantly doing these sacrifices? And so let me read this again so that I can get a clear picture. The use of scapegoats is as old as civilization itself. So a scapegoat, using something else, blaming, putting the blame on something else, whether it's a human, they said whether it's a human, an object, or an animal. They used to, and they mentioned that the Hebrews would use goats and have a priest uh, pray over the goat to lay both hands while confessing the sins of the children of Israel. So then the goat became the one that took on their sins. And when the goat was killed and destroyed, that was a direct representation of the sins being destroyed. What they're telling you is that the humans, because remember they said you can use a human, an object, or an animal, right? They're using these uh, sacrifices, blood sacrifices of people as representation of clearing their sins, okay? Largely because, like I told y'all in the first message, the chosen approved of blood sacrifice when we supported the blood sacrifice of Yeshua, whether you believed him to be a real person or not, 
when you said in the blood of Jesus, when you did the communions, when you ate of his flesh and drank of his blood, when you did all of these things, you put the energy out there into the spiritual realm that said you support blood sacrifice to be the quenching or the the um the ultimate um the ultimate sacrifice that would destroy your sins. And so this is why I told y'all in the first one to go back and to clear that energy off of yourself and your ancestors, all of that energy that you put out there when you were supporting the blood sacrifice of a man, you want to clear that off your hands, get that blood off of your hands so that you make it clear in the spiritual realm that this is not what you support because this is exactly why they do the blood sacrifice. Because you have established that the reality is the only way to get rid of sin and to find salvation is through the blood sacrifice of a man. This is what they believe. They're like little babies, okay? They're like little babies. And so I'm talking about the powers that were, the enemy. This is what we have bought into. And so now they actually believe the lie that they fed to us. And so they use these human sacrifices in order to power the beast system that they have, thinking that it'll buy them more time. It will strengthen them. It will, it will empower them. It will give them more currency, more energy. And so this is their tactic here. This is why they're doing these outright sacrifices, okay? So, um, while the authentic Athenians and the Aztecs with the Athenians and the Aztecs, the scapegoat was human, often a person fed and raised for the purpose. Often a person was fed and raised for the purpose. So like I told y'all, these, the powers that were have been monitoring the chosen since babies and they fed and raised, they conditioned they created the narrative. They put certain people in positions surrounding you to make sure that you was in the right energy to be used as the ultimate sacrifice to help to offset their sins and to buy them more time and power. This is what they're saying right here. They used the same tactics as what they had seen other cultures do, right? This is what they say. And that these human sacrifices, the, pe the person was often fed and raised for the purpose of that sacrifice. Now, do you think that that person knew from the time that they was born and, and growing up in their adolescence into their adult life that they was being prepared and prepped to be, to be used as a human blood sacrifice? Of course not. But they were surrounded by, they became a sheep surrounded by wolves. And those wolves all had one agenda, and that was to ensure that that sheep, because see, the thing is, they was told that they was a sheep. That's what is happening here. The scapegoat energy. You're being told that you are a sheep. You're being told that you're weak and that everyone else around you is more powerful and more vicious and that you must stand down and that you must be bashful and that you must be guided and, you know, handheld throughout your life because you're being prepped for sacrifice at some point when they need to pick you, when they need to select a person as their sacrifice. But fact of the matter is, those who were told they were sheep were actually really lions surrounded by wolves. And they wanted to make sure that the chosen remained asleep to who they were so that when it was time for the sacrifice, for their sacrifice to come up, when the powers that were needed to siphon their energy and use them as a blood, a blood sacrifice, that chosen seed would not know who they were. And they would not have taken their power back by that time. That's the whole agenda. Keep them asleep. They won't know how powerful they are. And then the sacrifice can be carried out. But see, many of you are awakening. And so even though many of, many of us have been under sacrifice and have been surrounded by wolves who were willing to take our lives and sacrifice us, we have now awakened to the power that we possess and now they fear us. Now they fear us because they recognize that we see them and we also see who and, and whose we are. We know that we have a divine mother and father. We know that we have a spiritual team and we work very closely with them. And so while they watch us, they are being watched. 
So this says they rear the human sacrifice up from a child into adulthood to be prepped, okay, and raised and fed for the purpose of human sacrifice. So I'm going to read this last paragraph. It is an extremely human response to not look inward after a mistake or crime, but rather to look outward to fix the blame and guilt on a convenient object. And so that's what they've been doing. They don't want to take the blame, knowing that they have killed, slaughtered, murdered. The entire structure has been built on criminality, bloodshed, all types of wickedness, dark magic, uh, pedophilia, you name it, they did it. They do not want to take the blame. And so instead of taking the blame, they will put it on a scapegoat, a human sacrifice, thinking that that is going to absolve them and give them more time and power. That's why they're doing it, y'all. So just know that the truth is being told, is being put right there in your face. And you are being, it's being strongly suggested that you do not operate from the energy of fear. Because there's going to be a lot of people around you that's going to want to pull you into that energy. Trust and believe there's spell work that's being done against the chosen as we speak by the powers that were to take you backwards. They want you in your carnal nature. They want you in the energy of fear. They want you in the energy of lusting unhealthy partnerships and connections and unhealthy behavior patterns and codependencies. They want you in survival mode. And so if you felt like your energy has been off, it's time to do the work to alchemize, transmute, and get yourself back balanced. And so that's why I said salt bath, doing a fast, you know, listening to your frequencies, get, get your singing bowl, get your crystals, you know, say your affirmations, practice gratitude, give thanks to the most high every day, all day, you know, project the energy of love, make sure that you're checking your thoughts, maintaining that your thoughts are in alignment with what you want to create and not what you don't want to create. Cause either way you're creating. So if you're going to be creating and you, you're consciously aware of this, then you might as well make sure that you're creating what you want and not what you don't want. So we're not going to help the enemy to create their illusion and their false narratives anymore. We're not going to help them to create the web of the matrix anymore. No, we're shutting it down. We're tearing it down and we're destroying it. So that's the message for those of you. Uh, if you want a private reading from me, you know to email me. If you'd like to donate to my channel, I leave my information for my cash app in the description. I love you all and I will talk to you all next time.